You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is us letting it all hang out for your love life, examining Steph's dating experiences, and answering your hot topic dating questions. Just you, Steph, and me. No topic is off limits and no filters involved. This is Jen. And I'm Steph. If you have a question about your love life that you would like us to answer, you can submit your question at singlesmartfemale.com. Lover girl, and welcome to show 48 of Single Smart Female. I am your hostess, Steph, and am, of course, joined by my lovely co hostess, Ms. Jen Burton. Jen and I have a very special episode for you today. We are joined by one of the top professionals in our industry, the magnificent Dr. Diana Kirshner of LoveIn90Days.com. Now, Steph, before we go to the interview, I have to say that I was pleasantly I wasn't really surprised but then again I was pleasantly I I, I'm kind of I guess I'm holding a paradox here I was surprised and not surprised about how much fun I had during that interview because you know me I I don't talk to anybody in our industry (laughs) (laughs) I only talk to you and all you need yes it's absolutely all Steph's all I need um (laughs) (laughs) I hear it all the time so many people tell me that I (laughs) well Ah, well, let's quit boosting your ego here. Actually move <laughs> we don't and, have to stop. I'm, I'm really okay with it. I, I see that. I, I, <laughs> I totally hear you. Anyways, okay. Okay, moving on. Moving on. I was very impressed with all the intimate details of her life that she was willing to share because most of the time, top professionals in a certain industry, they're not willing to do that. It's all about the work. It's all about what they want you to learn. But I was very impressed with her willingness to be open in order to illustrate to women what's possible, which is something we like to do here on Single Smart Female, even though we're obviously very arrogant about it. (laughs) No, not arrogant. No, Specifically stuff, just stuff. Right. Not not really I'm the only one who's arrogant around here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, the, the really cool thing about the interview with Dr. Diana is, like you said, she was willing to share a lot of intimate details about her own life and how when she started dating, she wasn't very good at it for various reasons that you will find out in the interview and how she was able to turn that around and create this not only amazing love life for herself, but Become also an adored, what we call an adored woman. Mm-hmm. And, and also, you know, build her Th- 30 plus years with the love of her life. That's amazing. That's incredible. I would love to, and she's even, she even shares details about her relationship with him now that blow me away and are just so inspiring to hear of what's possible. Right. Okay. Oh, one other thing before we get started. I want to let all of our single smart females know that I need you to listen to the entire interview because at the end of the interview, she offers something of really, it was really great value. And I was really impressed because it's something Steph and I wouldn't even offer <laughs> <laughs> to all of the, our single smart female listeners. So be sure to listen to, all the way to the end so that you can get that information and take advantage because it's a super awesome gift. Today's show is sponsored by TheCourageKit.com. Are you tired of meeting craptastic men, going on craptastic dates, and feeling craptastically inept at dating and love? Let us rework your dating experiences, single lady. Fun, pleasure, and magic included. No experience required. We'll see you at TheCourageKit.com. Today, Steph and I are thrilled and honored to welcome a lovely lady who honestly needs no introduction because she holds well-deserved rock star status in the dating and love expert community. But just in case, single smart female, you've been hiding under a rock and you haven't heard of her, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Diana Kirshner of lovein90days.com. Dr. Diana is a world-renowned psychologist, New York Times bestselling author, and PBS love expert. Along with her team of expert love mentors and dating coaches, She uses a unique approach to healing from heartbreak and finding lasting love that has empowered thousands of women around the world. And guess what, single smart female? Today, she is sharing significant insight into what men really want just for you. 
I hope you feel as lucky as I do right now. Welcome, Dr. Diana. Hey, thank you so much, Jen. Thank you so much. I've never been introduced as a rock star. This is a first. <laughs> well, that's the space you hold in my heart right now. So I'm, I'm sure <laughs> other women will feel that way very soon yeah. if they don't know you yet. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and if you don't mind, we're going to hit you with some of the hard questions today because I know that our single smart female audience is really looking forward to such a special interview. And Dr. Diana, Steph and I have listened to other interviews that you've done. And first, I have to say that you're absolutely fantastic on camera. Well done. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And getting a little bit into your story, you've mentioned being the last of five daughters and that your father didn't even come to the hospital with when you were born. And in your words, you did not feel lovable, chosen, wanted, and that all of this, of course, interfered with how you dated. I know personally, oh, mm -hmm. I, I know yeah. personally what it's like to date from insecurity because I did it for about 15 years or so. And I was a huge romantic hot mess. I'm curious, though, did something happen for you while you were dating that opened you up to a different way of interacting with men and led you to 30 plus years with the love of your life? Which, by the way, qualifies you for even more of being the expert among experts and what we like to call around here at Single Smart Female, the ultimate adored woman. Because you don't just help people <laughs> find love and live it. <laughs> Well, that that's uh, that's so sweet. I uh, I tell you, yes, I uh, I grew up feeling very unlovable. I used to weep uh, because I thought, oh my God, my poor parents had me. So of course, when I started dating, I was a mess, and I wanted the ones that didn't want me, and I you know had was abandoned and rejected, and you, you name it, I I experienced it. And something very powerful happened. Something very powerful happened in my life that completely changed that trajectory and allowed me to actually have soulmate love. What that thing was, was that I actually had a love mentor. I had somebody who acted like a fairy godmother to me. I was actually a man, but he was like my fairy godmother. And he could see the beauty in me. He could see the wonderful gifts in me at a, you know, at a time that I could not. And he was very validating and appreciative, you know, appreciative in terms of relating to me. And it was very, very healing and very corrective and truly allowed me to select someone who would be very loving to me. I was just following my old childhood programming and picking people who were not loving because that was what my earlier experiences were. You know, it allowed me to be with someone having that kind of experience was so extraordinary. It allowed me to actually take in very high level love. And for that, I'm so grateful. Honestly, this, you guys, this is why I do what I do. I really want to pay it forward. I am you know, I'm so grateful. Well, I've got chills running. Dr. Diana, it just, it makes me very curious. How did you find this man? Or how did he find you? Well, I, it was a sheer gift of nature. He, um, he actually uh, knew someone in my network. I was actually sitting on a couch, very, very sad and crying. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, I can help you. Now, I didn't think anybody could help me. I didn't think anybody could help me, you know, because of uh, my, uh, all the difficulties in my background. I, uh, on top of everything, my, my father was a raging alcoholic. I mean, there was all kinds of problems there. I mean, he did the best he could and he's since passed. But, um, you know, so he says, I, you know, I can help you. I'm like, mm, well, you know, what do I have to lose here? So he started coaching me, but it was like, like a gift from the divine. That's all I can say. It was not like a big personal effort or seeking on my part. It was a gift from the divine. I, again, I have chills just shooting all, I mean, full body chills right now. Isn't it amazing how those things just happen in our lives? And then all of a sudden, our trajectory in love and in well, and, and, and all our endeavors start to change as a result. That, that's an, an incredible story. 
Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. All our endeavors. You're totally right. Everything shifts when you start taking in love and having more and more self-love. Everything shifts. It completely shifts in your life. And all you need to do is find where you're being offered an opportunity to shift. And all you need to do is have some willingness to say yes, to have some courage to get over your fears and say yes to wherever that is being offered. And uh, once you say that yes, uh, sometimes the sky is the limit and, you know, and even beyond the sky is the limit. <laughs> You're so correct. And I'm, I'm also curious because, as you know, personally, that a lot factors into your love life. Not it's not just about the love. It's not just about the man. There's a lot of things going on in your life that can can affect certain things going on within your love life. And and since so many of our single, smart, professional driven women that are listening to this podcast right now, I, I'm wondering, you know, you took a situation, a really difficult childhood situation and turned it into beautiful love and date and and an, a, your own fairy godfather came into your life and made a world of difference for you. But were there factors of your childhood that actually contributed to you being the successful woman that you are today as well? Well, uh, I'll tell you, it's very interesting. You should ask about that. I, um, I always had this drive for achievement, always, always, always. And what was funny is that a lot of this experience of being a nobody's girl in my family wound up fueling my achievement. So I would go to school and I would get an A. And I would come home to my parents. I would show them the paper and I would say, this is an A. This is a hard class. Oh, my God. Tell me how great it is. And they would be, uh-huh. and um I was like okay well you know I'm just gonna do more I'll just figure out more I'll I'll be more successful I'll get a master's degree I'll get a PhD Uh, I could show them that I'm I'm as good as a boy you know because they really wanted a boy I was the fifth of five girls and they wanted a boy they really valued boys I was like okay I'm gonna get that doctorate and they're they're gonna realize it, right? Of course, I never got that. I, I really didn't get that recognition, <laughs> but I did get it from other people in the world. You know, I did I did get it, and that has been a good journey for me. Uh, particularly when I've turned that achievement drive into service. Yes, so, absolutely. Uh, and, that that has resulted in more self-love, you know, taking my achievements and turning them to service. Mm-hmm. And that's been very healing for me. In a sense, you might say I've become my own loving parent. I've become my own loving fairy godmother. And uh, that, uh, honestly, is the thing, the part that I feel happiest about. You know, I, I really, that inner healing has been quite a journey. That's an incredibly powerful, you know, statement to make about it, about the inner journey of all this. But as you know, and I, because you've had thousands of clients come to you and you know, lots of us, and I, I, I'm included in that statement, come from very dysfunctional homes. And we use that as an excuse in our dating life. And we're not doing it intentionally to use it as an excuse, but we do. We use it as an excuse in our life and our dating life to not have the things that we really want when we can instead use it as fuel. For instance, just as you did, I think it's a very powerful way to take something that was ick and make it into something amazing. And then for you, turning it into service on top of that and creating a really gorgeous, beautiful empire. Well, I'll tell you what what it does to you, having adversity, being betrayed, being whatever happens to you, being cheated on, being left, being incredibly lonely or in despair. What that ultimately does as you climb out of it, it actually allows you to have tremendous compassion for Mm -hmm. people who are in a similar position. It allows you to really feel their pain. And that is the hidden gift. And I hate to say that because when you're in the darkness, I used to hate people would say that. (laughs) (laughs) No, it doesn't feel good. (laughs) I just want the pain to stop. (laughs) 
Yes. It is. I mean, I, you really can have compassion. Man, do you, can you have compassion for those who are suffering? And then that sets the stage for you in some way to be of service, you know, and uh, that is the ultimate uh, amazing thing to do. Okay. So before we dive into the meat of our topic today, Dr. Diana, you and I both know that there's no shortage of information out there in books, ebooks, articles, et cetera, on what men really want. So I'm curious, in, in your expert opinion, why are women still feeling so clueless about men in spite of having so much information and so much access to this information? Because it's not a matter of information. This is not like your job. You know, your listeners are really great at their jobs. And so having more information is what you need to get ahead in your job and to make a better work product and to know where the mentors are, that kind of thing. But this is about emotional matters. This is about matters of feeling. So matters of feeling have to do with your experience. It's your experiences that affect matters of the heart. That's why the experiences that uh, many of us have had that are negative really have such a tremendous impact. You can have all the intellectual understanding in the world, but you need a corrective experience. That's why having my fairy godfather, godmother there, and I and giving me the actual emotional experience of uh, you know being uplifted and being valued and being really my real self instead of hiding my light under a bushel basket and when it came to men <laughs> you know that that emotional experience is what made all the difference that's why I created the team of love mentor coaches because they are fairy godmothers they give a corrective emotional experience. They're incredibly dedicated and caring. They give an emotional experience. That's why we get the kind of results that we get. There was one woman in the love mentoring program, and she was only having serial relationships. She, she was sleeping with guys too soon. You know, she was having, you know, so they would disappear on her. Or she, it would last like maybe three months. I think three months was her limit. <laughs> like three months and they disappeared. Three months and they disappeared. Three months and they disappeared. And she mm-hmm. was very successful in her work, had her own company. And she went into love mentor coaching. And the love mentor coach really, really was there for her in helping her find these wounds and letting them go. And also in helping her connect to what I call her diamond self that is on a lovable level, on the deepest level of feeling chosen and wanted and loved and deserving of the highest level uh, of love. So just penetrating her heart. And, And she wound up with a really amazing, great guy who's totally crazy about her and um, there are three criteria we talk about in the Love Mentor Coaching Program. The one, first one is crazy about you. Uh, not crazy, but crazy about you. <laughs> <laughs> big, big difference, ladies. Big, huge difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, number two is willing to grow because there's no perfect guy. There's no perfect prince. So, but he's, if he's crazy about you and he's willing to grow, he's going to grow into the perfect prince. Chances are. Uh, number three is meeting the basics. That was, he wants a family, wants kids, if that's what you want. Uh, you know, similar values, similar goals. Uh, he's in the right socioeconomic ballpark for you, which has a lot to do with the way you connect and respect, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, those are the three criteria. Anyway, she wound up with a guy who really hit it out of the park on all those levels. And that's because she had an emotional, emotionally corrective experience. You know, when she went to pull away from this guy, which was part of her typical pattern at three months, the love mentor coach said, ah, 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 you know, (laughs) 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 ah, 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 that's your, you know, deadly dating pattern. That's your deadly dating pattern. So you hang in there. Yeah, that's um, I like that she had somebody there because that's a lot of what we do around here, too, is help women, you know, hold them accountable for these patterns so that they don't just skip over them again or find another creative way to repeat the pattern. Because you and I know women do that geniusly, too. They'll find creative ways. They get really about 
letting their patterns go on and on. I actually want to bring up the your criteria for men here here in a moment because I love your criteria for men and gauging whether or not this relationship has potential. But before then, I, I wouldn't mind getting into a little bit more about what men want. And I, the first question I want to ask you about that is, in your opinion, what's the biggest misconception from women about what men want? The biggest misconception is that they think they have to be a size four or six or something, and they have to like be absolutely gorgeous, blah, 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 and, and not have a, a, a flaw or a blemish on them. <laughs> so, uh, the biggest misconception is that it's actually all physical. The truth is, uh, when you look at research about why men marry the women that they marry, they generally answer the question by saying, I married her because I feel good around her. I feel good around her. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have anything to do with appearance. <laughs> you know, I, I 100% agree with you. And this is a conversation I have quite frequently with clients. This is about that has nothing to do with appearances. If you do any research on some of the and I'm going to bring in kind of a it's a very topic on the side, but I'm going to bring it in. But if you look at some of the research on some of the the most successful courtesans in our history, they weren't what you would consider conventionally beautiful. So it had to be about how men felt when they were around them that made them so successful. Exactly. Yes, that's really, really true. That's really, really true. And there are women who actually come into the Love Venture program who are stunning or even models. Yes. But they have a tremendous problem with men. And that's because mm -hmm. they're softened, uh, their, their charisma, their softened art has not been allowed to be expressed. They're trading on the physical. They're trading on the looks. And what that is like is that it's, it feels pretty dead to a guy. It feels pretty dead. I mean, guys love appreciation, fun-loving nature, um, having excitement in the moment, the woman really enjoying herself. And they love to make women happy. They have a prime directive, I think, at a biological level to make the woman happy. So, you know, you let them. You actually let them make you happy. I couldn't agree. You're stealing words from my own heart right now. That's, oh, I love, I, I could listen to you for hours about this because I agree with you 100%. <laughs> 100%. Mm -hmm. awesome. and, and one of the things I actually say is it, it doesn't matter if you're the superest of the supermodels. If he doesn't enjoy being around you, you're going to be dead to him at some point. Exactly. Exactly. You know, once the sex is over and the conquest, you know, and getting his notch on his belt as this gorgeous girl... Uh, he doesn't care, you know. I agree. It's all over. Yeah. Okay. So th I'm curious, what do you think about if ha what men have, what men say they want has changed over the years? Has it changed at all? I, you know, I, I, I don't think it's really, really changed. I, I, I really think it's pretty much the same. It's kind of biologically wired. It's, it's biologically wired, you know, for the pair bonding to happen that way. Men like being instrumental and they like fulfilling the woman, you know. And, of course, that just leads to, an, um, if you think about it on a biological level, that makes sense, you know, in terms of family life and the well-being of children. Yes. And so he wants to make her happy. He enjoy. Mm -hmm. he marries her because he enjoys how he feels when he's around her. He enjoys her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he's hopeful that, that that dynamic lasts for a lifetime. Yeah, and it does. It can. And about 10% of married couples, uh, they can actually maintain being madly in love for decades, for decades. So in fMRI studies, when they put one of those spouses who say they're madly in love into the machine and they put a picture of their spouse in the machine, their brain lights up in the same way that newlyweds' brains light up. So, and these are people who have been married for decades. The interesting part of that is that also the part of the brain that has to do with um, relaxation and security also lights up. So they actually have two minutes in one. Okay. So I'm really, really happy that you brought this up because I have a question pertaining to this. And outside of this this 10% that I'm going to guess, I don't know that they intentionally do it. It's just something that they have 
they've somehow figured out without really thinking about it. But let's say outside of that 10% of relationships, can those relationships with, do you believe that they, when knowing, having the right skill set can heat up over the years? Or do, do those relationships automatically hit an inevitable, mainly good friend status? Um, well, they vary what they do. Those 90% of the other uh, relationships, 40 to 50% uh, or 40, about 40% of the divorce, it varies quite a bit. Um, but, you know, the interesting thing is that you can intervene in a marriage, usually when there is a really scary threat to the marriage. Uh, often the opportunity is biggest to save that marriage and make it even better. For example, an affair is discovered, right? Mm -hmm. That could be a time that the relationship could go to a whole new level. Also, um, when you have a, a love mentor come in and help the couple, we have a fair amount of couples who actually come into love mentoring, and the love mentor coaches do individual sessions and couple sessions with them. You can you can sometimes really stop a marriage or help stop a marriage from from falling apart or take it to the next level. You know, but it's it's like the both parties usually need some kind of intervention and both parties are kind of hankering unconsciously for a kind of corrective emotional experience. The men also need a corrective emotional experience. They also need to connect to their diamond self identities, what I call the diamond self work, which has to do with creating uh, an actual identity or finding and building on a, and then creating an actual identity that is very fulfilling. And we uh, actually use names for that. Some of the names that the women have come up with are, you know, Beloved Mighty Isis, Amazing Grace, Vivacious Vixen, Saucy Minx. That gives you the idea, the flavor of mm -hmm. this. And the men also, if they come into coaching, you know, Captain Jack, you know, that kind of thing. Because that is a very corrective kind of thing to do when you're in a love relationship to come from your most empowered, your most, you know, your most self-loving identity. It's hard to make a love relationship work if you're self-hating or feeling low, you've lost your job or whatever the heck is going on that is causing you to be in a downward spiral. It's very hard. Yes, I agree with that. And all right. So I have a fun question for you, Dr. Diane, if you don't mind. I want to know what you particularly love about men. <laughs> we, we want good, Dr. Diana. You've worked with enough of them. You know enough of them. I have. I have. What I love, honestly, is that amazing uh, eagerness to uh, make a woman happy. I, I love that. I actually, I actually love that. That I, I just think it's it's so cool. I, I, I love that, and that's ha make a woman happy in bed, and make a, ha a woman well. happy outside of bed. <laughs> yes. Okay. That oh, you you're you're such a woman uh, uh, who goes straight to my heart. I I love that that answer. There, men are. I, and this is what we talk about all the time. How how amazing men are, but men get such a bad rap with women and they don't believe that men really want to make them happy. That's true. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> yes. 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 I, I talk about, and I'm sure you do too, um, how to create those opportunities to, for him to show you, you know, all you have to do, you can be the strongest, most successful woman in the world. But if you don't create some space for a man to uh, do things for you and be there for you and make you happy, you're going to think that he doesn't give a crap about you. Exactly, exactly. And that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, exactly. you know, what we tend to find in our lives whatever it is that we believe we're going to find. So, you know, you have to change into a belief, into a, a your belief system so that you have an operative love intention. We call it a love intention in the love mentor coaching program. You create this love intention, which is a very deep affirmation. And, you know, where I am deliriously happy and totally fulfilled and you know whatever each person makes their own unique love intention so uh that actually shifts over to where you find where the guy actually does want to uh, fulfill you and you allow it to take place 
And the other part here that is very, very important is you have to give them direction or you have to give them at least breadcrumbs to follow in terms of what you need them to do. You know, the, a big problem occurs because the women actually expect the guys to read their minds and no guy can read your mind, but you have to actually tell him. And there's a magic phrase that we like to use in the Love Mentor Coaching Program. Um, you want to know the magic phrase? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> is it like a magic button? Because I, I love the magic, magic buttons. Button. <laughs> the, uh, the, magic, the magic phrase button is, I would really love it if you blank, fill in the blank. I would really love it if you looked into my eyes when you talked to me. I would really love it if you held my hand. I would really love it if you did the dishes. I would really love it if you stroked me this way. I would really love it. If you plan the date, you know, really would enjoy that. By the you way, know, this can be you bed too. I would really love it. He, he he's going to be very eager, ladies, very <laughs> eager. Yes, 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 yes. You know, you got to actually help the guy to come through for you. Help him win. Help him win with you. You know, once you start with that love intention, we're expecting to be loved up and fulfilled then you can actually help him to step up. Oh, I would really love it if you brought me a dozen red roses. And no request is too big. You know, what we do is we'll make a um, an inner decision, like that's too much to ask for. You know what I'm saying? I, that cruise, to take me on that cruise is too expensive. To take me on, you know, to that restaurant is so expensive, you know. But, you know, you do the guy a disservice by ratcheting down what you would really want him to do. You don't want to ratchet it down. Let Give him, you know, you're actually telling him he's a success. You're telling yes. him, you're validating that he can do these wonderful things and, um, you know, let him give them to you, tickle you, really, really tickle you. You know, my husband... He says he likes to wait for me to start giggling. <laughs> I start giggling when he outdoes himself. I start giggling, you know. Okay. Okay. Speaking of your husband, this is really important. What do you specifically love about your husband? What I truly love the best about my husband is that he has always been willing to grow. So we have grown into so many different iterations of ourselves with each other. It's been such an exciting adventure. You know, we've written books together. We've traveled together. Um, he assists me in the Love Mentor Coaching Group. Uh, we, we have done many, many, many wonderful things together because we, you know, he's just grown. He just, he changes. His interests change. And I find that fascinating. He's always been fascinating to me because I just don't know who he's going to be this year, you know, <laughs> but his devotion never stops. Well, speaking of devotion, you know, um, in these parts, like I said, uh, we, we believe that you are the ultimate adored woman. And I, I'm sure you do, but I want to acknowledge you for creating that space in your life to let him do that for you and let him to step oh up and God. be such yeah, an amazing yeah. man. Thank you. You know, let me tell you, I mean, he, once he was in meditation and he said, oh, in meditation, I saw this beautiful diamond and ruby bracelet I want to get for you. And I oh. said, I said, I said, I, I don't, you know, I don't want one. I don't, I don't know that I really want that. <laughs> and, he, and he said, well, just let me take you to the jewelry store. I said, sure, that sounds like fun. So we look at all these bracelets and I'm like, no, none of these are it. And the guy says, oh, wait, there's one in the back. And he brings it out. And I <gasps> look at it and I start giggling hysterically. <laughs> it's so oh my beautiful. Goodness. It's so beautiful. And he says, he says, this is a true story. He says to me, that's what I saw. That's the one I saw. I start laughing and laughing and laughing. I put on that bracelet. <sighs> it was amazing. It was just amazing. I just found it to be so utterly otherworldly and beautiful. You know, I, I don't, I'm not usually, you know, into stuff, things. But it was otherworldly and beautiful. Subsequent to that, someone told me, you know, rubies create great, wonderful, good fortune in your lives. That's what the stone is supposed to create. But that is an example. I mean, you know, I, uh, 
for me to live in that kind of relationship with the kind of background I had as a child is truly miraculous. That's all I can say. I mean, it is truly miraculous. And a true testament to everything that you're teaching and and sharing with women from around the world. And I want to bring it back because I I said that we would talk about briefly, we would talk about the three criteria, but I actually want to specifically talk about what you just mentioned, which was the willingness to grow, which is an extraordinarily sexy attribute in a man, no doubt. And I want to clarify that though, for women out there that when, when you're saying, when you say Dr. Diana willingness to grow, you aren't saying that he has to listen to yoga or do meditations with Deepak or, or not listen to yoga, excuse me, do (laughs) yoga, listen to meditations or even go to Tony Robbins seminars. I mean, I've told the story on the previous episode of single smart female, how my now husband told me that when we were dating, he only did three feelings, hungry, sleepy, and happy. Yet I could see <laughs> he did. He actually told me that hungry, sleepy, or happy. And I could mm-hmm. see as we were dating, even though he wasn't able to say it, he was committed to growing together as individuals. And, and just by seeing how he treated me. And in fact, today, he loves to listen to Tony Robbins. He meditates mm-hmm. with Deepak. And he has expressed interest in yoga. <laughs> well, let me say that that's true, that you're not looking for specifics, you know. Yes. And chances are he's not going to be doing what you're into in terms of a growth modality when you first meet him. But if he's exactly. crazy okay. about you and holds you in respect and high regard, he's going to be curious about what you're doing. And at some point he may enter what you're doing, you know. But what, what you're looking for in the beginning in terms of willingness to grow is, is he self-reflective? Can he tell you what he did wrong in his last relationship? Has he ever been in therapy? Has he ever had a mentor? Has he ever been to any kind of growth courses? Now, you're not saying he has, he has to have done all of that. No, because I, I think that there's behavior you can see, like if he's concerned, you know, concerned about the way he treated you or what he could do differently. I think those are, that's a way to gauge things as well, yeah. right? And then yeah. he can step I'm, into those other modalities. Exactly. Yeah. I was just giving, you know, some examples and obviously not all these examples are going to be true. You know, does he apologize? Yes. That self-reflection thing is huge. It's just huge. Also, this, this ability to, uh, to change himself, to learn and be- like create a better self. Whatever way he likes to do it, whatever way he likes to do it or wants to do it. Okay, so I I know that you're a very educated, well-read woman, and I'm curious. I'm sure you've heard of the quote by F. Scott Fitzgerald that said that says men get to be a mixture of the charming mannerisms of the woman they have known. How do you feel about that quote? Well, I think that that's actually true. I think over time that that becomes true and when there's a longer-term relationship. There's a lot of modeling. There's a lot of role modeling in a relationship, actually, that's uh, longer term. And um, there's a fullness, a growth, where both people become androgynous, become more and more androgynous. That is, they're anchored together in such a beautiful way, they can become more successful in the world and more instrumental. But at the same time, their intimacy is deepening, so they can become closer and um, more um, in touch with some of the feelings that they have at a deeper level. So they're becoming more and more androgynous. It's really quite beautiful to see or to have, you know, uh, to have somebody be in that process or see a couple in that process. It's quite, quite beautiful. Okay, Dr. Diana, we... Again, we're so excited to have you on today's show. I want to know, are there any specific projects that you'd like single smart females to know about and where they can connect with you at? Oh, well, yes. You know, we have a lot of amazing information at uh, lovein90days.com, which is my website. So um, we have very timely blogs. Just it's basically like a book, (laughs) that website. (laughs) So uh, definitely, you know, I would take advantage of that. And we have a newsletter there that um, is our free newsletter where you'll get the latest blogs and information. So that's something to really 
look into, and um, that's a place to connect with me. And, and then I also have a, an amazing free gift for your listeners. Oh, do tell. You know, I mentioned that I have this amazing team of love mentor coaches. They're extraordinary. They're totally handpicked. They're, I mentioned they were like fairy godmothers. They're actually like fairy godmothers and wingmen because they help you steer the plane. <laughs> They're very practical, too. <laughs> very practical. And um, these are the people I would go to if I ever had a problem in love or wanted to get ahead, you know, advance rapidly in my ability to have the kind of love that is very exciting and fulfilling. Anyway, the uh, amazing thing is that I can offer your listeners a free 40-minute session with one of my amazing love mentor coaches, and um, you can ask them anything you want. All they have to do is go to lovein90days.com. That's lovein90days.com and click on the coaching tab. And then now here's the important part. When you fill in the form, all you have to say is Jen sent me on the bottom. You have to add Jen sent me to ensure that you get your free session because we get inundated with so many requests for sessions. We sometimes turn people away. But if you put Jen sent me at the bottom of your form, and you fill it out, you'll definitely get your free session by phone or Skype. Wow, Dr. Janet, that is a truly a wonderful and kind and amazing gift. Thank you for sharing that with our listeners. Let me go ahead and repeat that information to make sure no lady out there misses out because Steph and I don't even do free consults. This is, this is truly, truly a gift to you. So single smart females, you would like a 40 minute free session. Go check out Dr. Diana Kirshner's site at lovein90days.com. When you register for the free session, be sure to say Jen sent me because she's getting inundated with the request for the free session. She is not going to be able to accept all of them. So this is your opportunity to dive in and dive in quickly and actually get that free opportunity and and change the trajectory of your love life. Thank you again, Dr. Diana. It was such a pleasure to have you on today. This was awesome. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, lover girl, it's time for the final thought on today's show. Dr. Diana, both you and I know that there are multiple pieces to women creating or recreating the love life they really want. If you had to leave single smart females with the most important piece, what would it be? Right now, no matter what you're feeling, no matter what you've just been through, Uh, No matter what has happened in your love life, remember, you don't want to quit before the miracle. Remember, do not quit before the miracle. Even if you feel like quitting right now, the miracle is just around the corner. So definitely pick yourself up and go for it. You deserve an amazing, extraordinary love relationship that's just right for you. Today's show is sponsored by TheCourageKit.com. Are you tired of meeting craptastic men, going on craptastic dates, and feeling craptastically inept at dating and love? Let us rework your dating experiences, single lady. Fun, pleasure, and magic included. No experience required. We'll see you at TheCourageKit.com. This is Jen. And this is Steph. Don't forget to subscribe to our show in your favorite podcast app, as well as share Single Smart Female with all of your single girlfriends. And if you would like to play around to learn more about mantourage dating, come see us at havehimyourway.com. Talk to you next time.